Item number 6448 Level 1 Unrestricted Containment Class Keter Disruption Class Kinect Risk Class Warning Special Containment Procedures Containment of SCP-6448 should be focused on investigation of deer exhibiting anomalous traits within and around the Appalachian area. Appalachia is a mountainous region in the eastern United States that is known for its dense woodland. All civilian sightings of SCP-6448 should be attended to by Mobile Task Force Gamma-4 Green Stags. Possible deaths resulting from SCP-6448 should be attributed to hiking accidents and sightings are to be blamed upon chronic wasting disease. CWD, sometimes called zombie deer disease, is a prion-based illness affecting members of the Cervidae family. It causes extreme loss of motor function control, may affect decision-making, and is always 100% fatal. While CWD is a legitimate disease, the majority of Cervids in Appalachia exhibiting traits are known instances of SCP-6448. The Site-44 Cryptozoology Division is tasked with ongoing research into the not-deer phenomenon. Should an SCP-6448 instance be captured, it is to be brought to Site-44 for containment and study. Site-44 is located in Essex, England. See history for details. SCP-6448 is an anomalous branch of the Cervidae family, more commonly known as deer. This includes true deer, muntjac, reindeer, elk, and moose. All members of this group display heightened intelligence and are presumed to be sapient. Many specimens exhibit some form of physical malformation, causing them to stand out from non-anomalous deer. While the exact details of physical abnormalities differ between instances, repeat commonalities are as follows. Legs bent backwards. Barrel-chested, bloated abdomen, emaciation, eyes belonging to unrelated animals, forward-facing eyes, jerky movements, loss of fear towards humans, tendency to walk on two hind legs, general bodily disfigurement. Aside from physical disfigurement, instances show severe divergence from the behavior of other cervids. Namely, SCP-6448 are known to watch observe, and stalk humans, often for hours or days. This includes following humans to and from their homes, wherein they will proceed to steal belongings, weapons, and food. Very rarely will SCP-6448 attack victims while they are indoors. SCP-6448 are most commonly encountered in deep woodland, particularly at night or dusk, when a person is alone. Any form of direct acknowledgement of SCP-6448's anomalous traits in these situations will always result in the victim's termination. Though treating SCP-6448 instances of normal cervids triggers no reaction. In such situations, personnel are to observe service protocol immediately. See below. Service Protocol SCP Foundation Cryptozoology Division these actions should be carried out by anyone inadvertently interacting with SCP-6448 and are necessary for your survival. Please skip to the section with relevant information if your life is under threat. If you notice a deer that seems off, look away and ignore it. If it knows that you've noticed it, it's too late. If you hear your name, whistling, or something else in the woods calling for you, don't acknowledge it. Never acknowledge it exists. Don't respond. Don't go looking for it. Don't call back to it. If you're walking at night and you feel something breathing on your neck or whispering behind you, the key to your safety is pretending that everything is normal. Your survival is dependent on your ignorance. Presently, SCP-6448 are known to inhabit only the Appalachian region of North America. Under review following Incident 6448-Alpha History SCP-6448 was officially assigned anomalous classification in 1980, though they have been recognized by local people since 1947. SCP-6448 is a firmly cemented figure in Appalachian folklore, known colloquially as the Not-Deer, 
due to the striking similarities of the species they imitate. Many locals claim to have encountered instances of SCP-6448, or possess knowledge of an individual who has. A majority of local communities living in rural areas of high activity are aware of the precautions required to avoid hostile encounters, primarily due to urban legends and stories involving the entities. SCP-6448 were previously researched at Site-41, located in North Carolina. On January 11, 1994, a group of three SCP-6448 instances broke into the site utilizing a tunnel system carved over an extended period of time. This triggered containment breach alarm systems, and the site entered lockdown protocol. The single instance kept in containment, being prepared for the section, was lost in the breach and not recovered. Over the following decade, a further five SCP-6448 instances would be captured and contained, all of which would escape the site through tunnels carved by other SCP-6448 entities. The decision was made to transfer all instances of Site-44 overseas, to prevent further breaches. Since this decision, no capture attempts have been successful. Addendum 6448.1 Recently Recorded Civilian Encounters The first reports of SCP-6448 surfaced around the week of July 7, 1947. In the time since the Genesis discovery, many members of the public have encountered the entities though most accidentally stumbling upon them do not alert local authorities. This is typically due to the SCP-6448 instance either merely watching the subject or becoming hostile. The following is a log of all recorded 911 calls related to SCP-6448 phenomena since the year 2000. January 2, 2000 Victim, age 41, female dialed emergency services after hearing their name being called from the woods near their home. The victim recounts the vocalization being likened to a scream, in a voice that they do not recognize, and requested assistance in locating the source. Emergency personnel requested the subject place their phone on the floor outside the home to listen for the alleged sounds. After two minutes, a vocalization was heard that was calling to the subject by name, emanating from the nearby forest. The subject was instructed to investigate the disturbance themselves and keep services updated on the situation. The victim then begins to walk into the woodland, getting about 50 meters into the underbrush, before inexplicably stopping. They claim there to be a noticeably large deer standing in the way of the path. She begins to walk closer, though states it does not move. Subject diverts from the path and begins walking in a different direction. After 30 minutes, no source of the voice is determined. The caller returns to the residence. June 13, 2002 Victim, age 28 male, calls 911 regarding a home break-in. The caller notes numerous items to be missing from the residence and requests an investigation. Operators dispatch two investigators to visit the home and pertain a potential perpetrator. The pair note that, based on earlier CCTV images, all cutlery, sharp objects, firearms, light bulbs, and a single copy of the novel, The Day After Roswell, are missing. Also noted is that there is a complete lack of any fingerprint at the scene, with no doors or windows having been broken into. Analysis of the home CCTV footage revealed there to be a two-hour period of missing film, with the exception of a single frame containing a service nippon on its hind legs, reaching towards the camera. Sika Deer. Its frontal hooves have been warped to resemble fingers. No footage of the entity exiting the home was discovered. November 19, 2005 A cattle farmer, age 54 male, reported to local authorities the sudden disappearance of over 30% of its largest herd. Response team searched the nearby area for four hours, though found no trace of the cattle. The victim would recommend to set up trail cameras and no any unusual activity overnight. At 1.11 a.m., two SCP-6448 are seen walking through the field before fleeing. One places an object into the ground, later discovered to be a single fork. A week after this discovery, 200 discarded bovine hooves appear at the location. March 4, 2009 Victim, 
Age unknown. Gender unknown. Dials 911 to request assistance from animal services. The victim is stood within a forest in front of a service elephant, which is violently contorting. Red Deer The animal is repeatedly ramming itself into a tree, covered in blood and viscera. The victim attempts to state, You better get a vet or something, I don't think it's well, before a piercing screech is heard and the lion falls silent. Recovered footage depicts the aforementioned animal squirming, seemingly in pain. A viscous churning is audible as a black mass erupts out of the instance, and the video turns to static. October 11, 2012 Victim, age 23 male, is a junior wildlife officer at Cherokee National Forest, Tennessee. They radioed their supervisor in early evening regarding a herd of Otocolius virginianus within the reserve. White-tailed deer Supposedly, there is a single animal that upon first glance appears average, though possesses divergent attributes, including backward joints, enlarged abdomen, and forward-facing eyes. Upon stating this, a distant whistle is audible, and the victim stumbles slightly. They begin to say, quote, What the… he… did it just whistle at me? Unquote, before the sound of hooves rapidly getting closer is heard. Notably, the hoof steps did not sound to be in the traditional gallop of a cervid. October 12, 2012 The former victim's supervisor calls authorities following the victim's absence from the reserve night shift. Following this, the radio begins to crackle. The victim's voice can be heard on the other end, and he requests the supervisor's attention. He calls regarding a herd of Otocolius virginianus within the reserve. They claim there is a single animal that upon first glance appears average, though possesses divergent attributes, including backwards joints, enlarged abdomen, and forward-facing eyes. Suspecting the creature to be a rare genetic malformation, the victim requests her supervisor to come to the location. The supervisor questions the victim about what happened the night previous. There is no reply. Upon the supervisor's and law enforcement's arrival at the site, a herd of approximately 80 Otocolius virginianus were present. A single entity is in the field center and appeared to be standing separate from the rest of the group. It flees the scene upon realizing the law enforcement's presence. Where it formerly stood laid a standard two-way radio. April 8, 2016 Victim, age 35, female, dials 911 using a satellite phone, distressed. They state that they are in County Woods and are being followed. She claims that, despite seeing no one for the duration of the hike, she quote, feels as if she's being watched unquote, and has heard someone walking behind her at various points in the trip. Victim is unable to give an adequate description of their location, but knows the route to return to her residence. Operators request the victim to return to a point wherein she can provide a sufficient geographic description of her position. The victim remains on the line for the duration of the hike back to a readily used portion of the Wilderness Trail. Along the journey, various unnatural sounds can be heard. These include footsteps, rock slides, coughing, whispering, and whistling. Nearing the main trail, all woodland noises such as birds and wind cease suddenly and the victim states she can see a malformed deer carcass coated in a thick layer of black slime. At this time, human screams can be heard in the distance. Operators request the victim continue and ignore other stimuli. Agents embedded in local law enforcement, suspecting SCP-6448 involvement, notify Gamma Forge of the situation. Twenty minutes later, the victim returns to the main trail. Gamma Four now operating the 911 call, informed the victim to not respond to any further unusual activity, and briefly outlined service protocol. For the duration of the victim's journey to her home, two sets of breathing are audible. The victim successfully returns to her residence and shuts the door behind her. Now out of sight from SCP-6448, agents inquire upon the victim's address, and the victim promptly complies. Operatives instruct the victim to have possession of all firearms and weapons on the premises, and to barricade herself inside a safe space with one exfil point. The victim swiftly begins grabbing all available weapons 
and thrown them inside a wardrobe. It is at this time that there is a knock on the front door. The victim does not respond and continues to hoard sharp objects from kitchen drawers. The knocking becomes more violent as the handle is being jostled and shaken incessantly. A voice on the other side repeats the phrase, Hello, it is me. Hello, let me in, in a calm manner as the door begins to shake. The victim retreats to her wardrobe, armed with a small firearm. Upon sealing herself into space, the knocking ceases and footsteps can be heard becoming further away. The sound of galloping is audible as the front door caves in. Hoofsteps can now be heard inside the home. The entity continues to repeat, Hello, it is me. Hello, let me in, as it searches the small building. A bright light flashes overhead, seemingly circling the house. Eventually the entity enters the victim's bedroom. Through a small slit in the wardrobe door, the victim can see a service canadensis standing on its hind legs and surveying the room. Elk. Its movements are crooked and stiff, seeming to struggle to stand in a bipedal fashion. It slouches down to a quadrupedal crouch, similar to the stance of an arachnid. It inhales heavily, and its head locks on the view of the wardrobe. It is noted as possessing human eyes. It scampers towards the subject and opens the door. A single gunshot is heard. Responders found no trace of either SCP-6448 or the victim. It should be noted that this represents a small fraction of human to SCP-6448 encounters, as the majority of occasions go unnoticed and undocumented. On each of these occasions, all associated video, photographs, and objects were confiscated by MTF Gamma-4, whom also called off public investigation. Cover Story 356 Alpha, Home Break-In, and 898 Gamma, Missing 411 were successfully implemented. Addendum 6448.2 Incident 6448 Alpha On November 29, 2019, MTF Gamma 4 Green Stags, successfully detained and captured an instance of SCP-6448, with the assistance of MTF Nu-7 Hammered Downs Heavy Vehicle Division and highly experimental shock rifles. The the resulting skirmish left a single instance unconscious, which was swiftly placed aboard an armored military-grade helicopter en route to Site-44 in England to prevent outside assistance. Upon reaching the site, the sedated entity was transferred to a containment cell without incident. The following is a log of events thereafter. Incident 6448-Alpha Date November 30, 2019 Location Site-44, Bowness Island, England Begin Log SCP-6448 instance is contained within a large reinforced steel containment cell, having just awoken from heavy sedation. Cryptozoology Specialist F. Oz stands in front of a large one-way glass window that encompasses the room's south side. Greetings, SCP-6448. The instance suddenly bolts upright and stares at the intercom. Can you understand me? We've seen your genus speak English just by in the past. The instance does not respond. It begins licking its arm. Please, we know your secret. The instance pauses. Admittedly, it wasn't exactly well kept. If you just look at yourself for more than a few seconds, it is very clear that you're not… normal. The instance has stood facing away from the window. Its neck swivels 180 degrees, visibly breaking multiple vertebrae as there is an audible crack. It does not blink. To containment staff. I thought you said this was one way. Staff mumbling. It is? The instance's gaze remains locked on researcher Oz. Are you something imitating deer? It is clear that, if so, you possess basic anatomical knowledge on them though details are clearly faulty. In fact, a better question would be, how, if in fact you are not what you pretend to be. The instance opens its mouth, which contains abnormally sharp teeth. Its jaw moves in a manner that seems to imitate speech. No intelligible dialect is heard. Rather, 
A sound similar to gagging or choking is audible. Shall we move on? What I'm more concerned with here is why you take our people. Is it a vendetta? Spite? Food? The instance blinks for the first time in the interview. The movement is noticeably forced. Responding is mandatory. The instance shows no reaction. If you will not comply, maybe you'd like to see your brand new containment s- Research. Research. The instance speaks in a distorted version of Oz's own voice. Research? What kind of- July 7th, 1947. The instant suddenly rams the 20-inch thick one-way glass, cracking it slightly. Researcher Oz stumbles backwards. The instance begins to collapse. It contorts violently and begins screaming. Its abdomen bulges and rice. Get the stags in here now! A black, viscous, tenderly mass erupts out of the instance's side. It leaps and squirms around the cell before shattering the window. The remaining carcass is entirely hollow. Containment breach detected. All personnel report to the nearest safe room. Containment Sector 4 blast doors will seal in ten seconds. The tenderly mass swiftly maneuvers outside of Sector 4 in seconds, clearing the lockdown area. It travels in the direction of the main exit. Full sight lockdown initiated, locking main exit in five sec- The mass clears the main desk. It shatters the glass in the front exit and disappears into the outside shrubbery. End log. A two-month-long search proved inefficient in locating the escaped anomaly. Additionally, since this incident, there has been an unprecedented increase in CWD-afflicted deer and UFO reports in the area surrounding Site-44. Further research is ongoing.